Welcome everybody. I'm Irene Pasternak teaching on uh, Feldenkrais for Northwest Parkinson's Foundation. I'm glad you're here today. And we just finished a breakout room talking about the Northwest Parkinson's Foundation Hope Conference that happened online last Friday and is still happening online because it's all recorded so you can watch it at your convenience. And Mira at the end will tell us how to how to get there. You basically, if you haven't registered yet, you go to Eventbrite, you register, and then you get access to all the videos. But I, I just started the conference on Friday because I had a, a busy day, but I did a couple hours of it. And the keynote presentation by Nan Little, I found uh, very interesting and fun. And the thing that stuck out to me the most in her presentation was the title of the book she wrote, which is, how can I climb Mount Kilimanjaro but not brush my teeth? And it, it made me think about what I've been doing in this class in a little different way. And I decided that I'm gonna focus in August on those activities of daily living that just can get annoying. And the reason I'm doing it is, instead of the, some of the more abstract classes that I've done, is that I want you to begin applying the Feldenkrais ideas in all those things in your daily life. And just to see if I can make it a little easier to make that, how do you transfer what you're learning in class? And like, it's great if you come out feeling good at the end of class, but it's more great. Um, it, it, what I'm after is, is that whenever something comes up that's irritating or difficult or painful, you are able to apply those ideas in the moment um, with that. So today I wanted to start with washing dishes because I was, I was thinking about that this morning as I was unloading my dishwasher and getting started. And for me, doing the dishes is one of the primary places that I apply what I learn in Feldenkrais. And so every time I'm doing the dishes, I'm experimenting and exploring. How can I do it easier? How can I do it more comfortably? And there's a general principle in how people work, how our bodies work, that if we improve any one thing, the whole system improves. So might as well focus on dishes because it's something that I'm stuck with doing um, a couple times a day unless I want a lot of flies in my kitchen in the summer. So. Anyway, that was my, the, the HOPE conference was my inspiration for August's program. So in order to do a session with dishes, I'd like you all to go and get a dish or two. It'd be nice to have a cup handy, some kind of small plate or a bigger plate. I, I use plastic plates, so minor plastic. If you're using porcelain plates, smaller is better because I want it not too heavy. And if you are living in a situation where somebody else is doing all the cooking for you, I'm envious, but you could get a book um, and a book could stand in for a dish. Just something to manipulate in your hands. The other thing I like about dishwashing and this way of thinking about dishwashing that at least for me and my husband, this was one area we struggled with of who's gonna do the dishes and who does the dishes more than 50% of the time. Yeah, I see some, some nods for people who, who live with a partner of, um, of that. And once I shifted into thinking about quality while I'm doing the dishes, now I fight for the opportunity. Um, and it just changed my attitude toward it because it was like, oh, this is my meditation. I'm not somebody who likes to sit still and meditate. Um, but when I do the dishes, it's my check in with myself time. So I, I just wanted to share it from from that perspective as well. All right. So um, come and sit toward the front of your chair. 
And I know we don't do dishes and sitting usually, but we're going to start in sitting and then we'll move to standing a little bit later. And you, if your dishes are sitting down on your desk in front of you where your computer or iPad or your device is, pick up a dish and move it to the other side of the table. And move it back and forth like that a few times. So we're always picking up the dish from the counter and bringing it to the sink or from the sink to the counter. And how do you do that? There are so many strategies for how you move the dish into your focus. And I'm, I'm watching to, to see what people do and then I'm going to talk you through uh, some of the ways I see. So put your dish back down on the counter and reach both hands over to get the dish. And feel how your weight shifts as you're reaching over there. So put it down and, and do that same motion again. And it's like you pass yourself from sit bone to sit bone in order to get both hands over to get that plate. What are your knees and feet doing? This I can't see in the video. I see um, some people have their knees wide with their feet under them. Let's all try that. So your knees wider than your hips and you go over to the side to get the dish. And what happens in your feet? Do they stay flat? Does the weight roll into the big toe or stay toward the outside more under the fourth toe on the leg you're coming away from. Let's experiment. Let's, if, if these are your two feet, let your two feet, you lift the outside edge of one and the inside of the other, like you were standing on a sideways angle. And if you reach for your dish, feel what that feels like. Okay, and come back. And then keep both feet so the pressure is under the, the ball of the foot, under the fourth metatarsal, and reach over for your dish. And you could imagine now that dish is heaped with your Thanksgiving turkey and you'd be able to lift it, or that pan full of water you had soaking on the stove. And then try again letting your feet tip and there's a little bit of a feeling I could dive head first into that dish. But there's something about keeping the feet with the fourth that lets you feel sturdy as you pick that up. Now it's interesting, you have to do a little rotation in your body to bring that dish into the sink. Because if, if that dish is on the counter, something has to rotate to get you there. What part of you rotates? So something in your back rotates and your sit bones might rotate. You might find one sit bone pulls backward and one sit bone goes a little forward. Try that, so you're holding your plate and slide one sit bone forward as you put the plate down and then slide it back as you move the plate. And rest for a moment, put your plate down. So in the way our back is constructed, we've got three segments of, of the spine. There's the lumbar spine in your low back, the thoracic spine in the middle that your ribs attach to, and then the cervical spine in the neck. And our necks are pretty good at rotation. They can go quite a range. And our thoracic spine is also pretty good at rotation. You could imagine somebody holding your ribs and twisting them a little bit. It's like the ribs, the rib cage can twist. Our lumbar spine, the very low part that goes into the pelvis, is lousy at twisting. And when we twist it, that uh, we, we do a like a heavy big twist on it, that's when you can herniate a disc in your in your lower spine. Um, the, the lower spine is really good at rounding, at looking up, but it's not good at twisting. So that's why we have to let our sit bones twist a little. So play a little bit with your plate with the twist in the sit bones 
And then you can turn your thoracic and your cervical spine a little further. And oh, you, you could put the dish behind you if you wanted to. But we're just trying to do it with the sit bones and then higher in the spine. Yeah. All right, put it down for a sec. And let's stand up for a moment. And in standing, pick up your dish and move it over and feel how you, how your weight transfers from foot to foot as you move it. And sense your sit bones. We don't usually sense them when we're standing. But somehow, just like when you were sitting, your weight went over one side of your pelvis and one sit bone came a little forward. In standing, you might be able to sense it more that one hip comes a little forward. This is where the dancing with the dishes, as you're, as you're doing your dishes the next time, sense when your hip, one hip comes forward, when one hip goes backward, as you're moving the dishes around. Yeah, you're offering it to somebody else. When one shoulder comes forward with the hand, or do you just hold your torso still? You could just hold your torso really still and just use your arm. You reach out, you pick up the dish, you can move it across yourself. You could pass, if, if you don't move your torso at all and you want to get the dish on the other side, you could pick it up with one hand, put it in the other hand, and put it down on the other side. So this is the no torso, no weight shift method of doing dishes. And then try the weight shift method where you, you reach and it's all in your feet and your hips that move your dishes. This is back, you know, you raised 10 kids, you've got, you've got dishes and you're carrying a stack into the kitchen. This is the technique you want to use for those 10. Good. And check in with your feet. Are your feet, do they stay flat? Do they tip in toward the big toe? Do they tip a little out toward the outside as you pass your plate? Which makes you feel most secure on the ground, like nothing is gonna tip me over? All right, come on back down to your chair. And just a reminder that in this, just like in every Feldenkrais class and even better in every aspect of your life, nothing should hurt. If it hurts when you're doing it, go slower, go gentler. See if you can invite some more of your body to participate. And if it still just is not feeling good, uh, unmute yourself and ask for help and we can look at you together and then we can see what might be going on that, that you could try differently to make it more comfortable. But the goal is how to learn the most coordinated, lazy, easy way to do these everyday movements so you're not hurting yourself with them and um, you have more energy to do the fun stuff in life, which isn't always the dishes. <laughs> um, but, okay, so now let's pick up our cup um, or something, something round that has an inside to it. Uh, I don't know if, if you don't have a, a cup around, you can pick up an imaginary cup. It works just as well. And now with a cup, you might want to wash the inside. You left your coffee in there too long. It's dried on. It's uh, or some soup, whatever. It's so you stick your hand inside and begin to wash. And this is it's it's so fun to watch people because I see so many different techniques of doing it. Um, I see someone with their cup reaching in from above. Everybody try that as a method and feel what it asks of your shoulder.
and how your elbow has to lift up. And if your elbow lifts up, does that make it a little more comfortable in your wrist? Rather than bending the wrist. We've, we've done some sessions about wrists and wrists like to be in line with the arm. And so if you're gonna come from above, you might even tilt your shoulders a little bit. And as you tilt your shoulders, that'll make it easier to lift the elbow up so that your hand can get in the cup. And it might be if you hold that cup a little lower, what does that do to come in from the top? And it, it, it's so, and put your cup down for a moment. It's so funny because we don't think about these things when we're doing the dishes. You just do the dishes the way you've always done them. But a slight change of lowering your hand, up, upping the shoulder can make a difference. All right, pick up your cup again, and let's use a technique I saw other people using, which was uh, putting their hand in from the side. <laughs> and then put your hand in from the side and begin to rotate your hand to scrub the inside of the cup. Okay, and is your other hand moving too? So you could rotate the cup one way and your hand the other way. Just sense what your shoulder blades are doing. Are they doing anything? Okay, pause for a moment. This time hold the cup still with one hand, put your other hand inside it from the side and rotate just from your wrist to see how much range you have when it's your wrist doing the work. And then begin to let it go up your arm so your elbow does something. Your elbow goes up and down a little bit. So with the elbow going up and down, the wrist can stay pretty neutral. It's like you're turning your whole forearm as a unit. Okay. And if you let your shoulder blade get involved a little, let's take our hand out of the cup for a minute. Take your shoulder blade and squeeze it towards your spine and then come away from your spine. So your shoulder might go back a little, your arm might rotate outward a little bit so your shoulder blade can move. And then if you rotate your arm hanging down so your thumb goes in, so I'm taking my, my arms hanging and my thumb is going this way. I'm rotating around to get the shoulder blade woken up. Okay. And then using your shoulder blade as the main thing to move your wrist. Okay. And do your sit bones know you're doing this? Put your cup down for a moment and slide back in your chair so that your back is touching the back of your chair. And grab your cup again and roll your hand around in the cup and see what do you feel with your back against the chair? Is there a little bit of movement, one shoulder pushing back and coming forward, your low back might push into the chair and come away from it. A little movement, your head might move a little left and right. Good, rest for a moment. Come back to the front of your chair. And now we're gonna imagine that over to the left side of you, there is a giant cup. You know, it might be as big around as your washing machine, uh, the, the circle in the washing machine. And reach with your hand, and what would you have to do to clean inside this washing machine? I, I'm picturing a front loader next to you. Um, that you're, and to make that big circle with your body. Uh -huh. Let your sit bones drive the circle. See what that's like when the 
yeah, so you can make it bigger. Your arm could do nothing. Your arm could just be passively moved by your sit bones and your ribs. Good, and stop for a moment. This is the idea behind the, the BIG program. Um, I don't know, how many of you have tried BIG? Uh -huh. Sometimes by doing the bigger motion, then you can sense all the parts of you that are involved when you do the smaller motion. So go ahead and do that big, clean up the, um, the inside of the washing machine that's next to you. And catalog, what are your feet doing? What are your sit bones doing? What are your ribs? Do you breathe in a pattern? Like do you inhale as you go away from yourself and exhale as you come back toward yourself or vice versa? How about your sternum? What does your sternum do when you're cleaning the inside of the washing machine? Good, okay. Then come back to your little cup and wash the inside, scrub the inside of it and see if it's just a little easier and if you can feel that echo in your body of cleaning the washing machine that that there's just that a little bit forward and back um, something in your shoulder blade something in your ribs and then put your cup down and rest both hands in your lap close your eyes and sense the differences in the right side of your body and the left. Is one sit bone more comfortable on the chair? Does one foot feel more connected to the floor? The distance of your shoulder from your earlobe. Is it the same left and right? And take a breath in. And is the fabric of you, when, when that breath blossoms inside you, it, it comes in and then it expands, does it expand a little easier on one side? So who knew that washing a cup can settle one side of the body? But it can if you do it with this kind of attention to the, to the details. Might take you a little longer to get your dishes done, but it, uh, it changes how you feel. All right, so let's um, take the cup in our other hand and put your other hand inside it to, to wash it. And notice on this side, does your, the hand, the first hand you were working with, which is probably your dominant hand, I find that on this side, I do it all with my dominant hand and my other hand stays still. So hold the cup still with, with the hand you're holding it with and try and do all the motion in the hand that's now inside it. Okay, And just see how far around does your hand go when you're, when you're doing it the way you're doing it now. Okay, good. And put it down. And now this front loading washing machine is over on the other side of you. So reach across yourself, which remember what we did before with the rotation, you gotta move one sit bone forward to reach across yourself comfortably. And begin to wash the inside of the washer. Trying to do it with your sit bones, with your feet, not sticking your feet in the washer, but just feeling how you push against the floor, going the other direction. Feeling, what does your sternum do? Is it making a little circle? Does it go forward and back, left and right? Are you breathing? Are you breathing? As you're washing the inside of the washing machine and then how are you breathing? Good, and come back. Put your hand in your cup. 
and see, can you get a little bit more motion, like go around a little further in the cup after that? It's your shoulder blade knowing that it needs to come away from your spine and go toward your spine. And then do it with both hands so you're twisting in opposite directions. That lets you, and, and really exaggerate the shoulder movements. One shoulder comes forward, then the other goes, like one forward, one back. Yeah. Good, and put your cup down. Now it's interesting, pick it up again with your dominant hand so that your other hand is the one that's washing it. This hand, does your wrist go in in line with your body? Or do you do, you know, some funky kind of motion in the wrist? Usually with our non-dominant hand, we don't have as many bad habits. Um, and so it's often that it goes in straighter on this side, whereas the other hand, we might think we can reach it in all kinds of creative ways. But just the trying to keep the, the wrist in line as you do that. All right. So rest for a moment. Close your eyes again. Just feel for any differences left and right, or if you're feeling a little bit more even. So many of our asymmetries come from the dominant hand doing all of everything. And so trying to wash dishes backward one day, if you're feeling like your, 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 your spine is a little out of whack, just wash your dishes backward and you'll feel better at the, at the end of it. Um, let's stand up for a moment. Yeah, sorry about that. My phone will stop in a moment. So as you um, take your cup in your hand and standing, and now imagine that those stains in that cup are just really deep and you have to put a lot of muscle in there. How are you gonna put that muscle in? You've got a sponge in your hand, you're trying to push the sponge against the cup. What do you do? What do you, how do your hips help you put some muscle in the cup? Is there a way that you can bring a hip forward and backward in order to, to muscle? Yeah. Switch hands and try it with the other hand. So you're still thinking your wrist is straight, your other hand can be turning the cup as well, but you're, oh, it's dirty and you really wanna put some strength into it. Where do you stand on your feet in order to do that? Okay, and then come and sit down. and pick up a plate or a book for those of you who are using a book um, and reach when, when you're doing dishes one of the most challenging things is that the sink is in front of you right and so if you hold the dish really close to your body it feels light as a feather it's 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 easy to hold the dish there and then reach it forward and feel it go slowly as you reach it forward, 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 how it gets heavier when it's out there. And if you leave it out there, your hand might begin to tremble a little bit to, to hold it far away from you. So how can you counterbalance this weight so your back doesn't hurt when you're doing dishes? The general principle of counterbalance is that for something to go forward, something else has to go backward. So as you push the dish forward, what part of you could you push backward? Mm -hmm. 
And I'm curious, what parts of you are you finding that could go backwards as the dish goes forward? Okay, uh, Bud's pointing to his butt to his pelvis. So you could take, um, if you reach your sit bones backward, so you know where your sit bones are. Marion, if you haven't done this before, it's, it's helpful to put your hand under, like putting it in your back pocket and sliding it under and you can feel your sit bone, which is the very bottom of your pelvis. And you pull that bone backwards as the dish is going forward. In fact, everybody try that. Take your hand under one, the other hand under the sit bone and pull the sit bone backward as you bring the plate forward. And you'll feel that it's easier to hold the plate out there. You can take your hand out after you get the sit bone back. So that that, that counterbalance. All right, rest for a moment. I think I've, I've talked about it before. Many of you know I'm an inline skater and um, I um, have been working to be able to do a marathon on my skates and there's, there's, a, there's a 39 mile skate that's happening in September that I wanna do. So I'm trying to build my miles up so I can do that. And this idea of counterbalance, this exact same thing we're doing with the plate, let me take 5% off my time on my last skate and um, add mileage to it. So I went from 18 to, to 24 miles, increasing my speed the whole time. Just by that idea that when I bend over to skate fast, if I take my sit bones and stick them out behind me, I bend deeper and I get more power in my legs. And it's, it's just amazing that such a simple little counterbalance thing can have a profound impact on an athletic activity and on doing the dishes. Um, so when I'm, when I'm skating, what I imagine in order to get my sit bone to go back is that I have a trailer attached to it. You know, you, can, uh, you can't really see it in my skeleton picture on there, but there, there's a hole above the sit bone. I just imagine a string tied there to a trailer, and that makes me pull in a different way. So you could imagine that your sit bone has something tied to it, and it's pulling you behind. And you might have to scoot your chair back from your computer but if you pull that sit bone with that string way back to the wall behind you, see how far out you can comfortably extend your plate in front of you. Now, there's another way to take a, another part of you back. Did anybody try pulling in their belly a little bit? So try pulling in your belly and that will make your sit bones curl in front of you as you reach out with the, with the, um, with the plate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's two very different ways if you move the bottom of your pelvis backward or if you move the top of your pelvis backward. And let's stand up and experiment with it. See what you do when you're standing. In standing, there's, there are some more options for what goes back and forward. If, if you take nothing backward, if you just let your whole body come forward with the plate, see what your hamstrings and your calves do. How they kind of light up of like, because they're, they're, they're trying to keep you from falling on your nose if nothing goes backwards. It's like there's a guy wire behind you. But if you, um, if you either take your sit bones backwards, which means you have to bend at your knees a little bit, if you bend your knees and your ankles a little, kind of like you're beginning to go into a squat, see how far that dish can go forward. Mm -hmm. And then try, what if you pull your belly in and take the middle of your back back? Now, how does that work? Which, which, which feels nicer? Or is there any other part of you you could take backward? You could in standing, if you're holding the dish with one plate, try taking a shoulder backward. Or a hip, a hip backward, one hip goes backward. And see if that allows you to reach out more comfortably. Or, 
or try standing one foot in front of the other. And then is it easier to bring that dish forward with the hand you're holding it with now with your right foot forward or your left foot forward? Which lets you take your bottom back to counterbalance a little bit. And to take the bottom back, this is one we're gonna to have to work on some more. You've gotta bend your knees a little bit, which means bending the ankles a little, yeah. And try the plate with your other hand. And which of the strategies makes you feel most comfortable? But if you play with a few of these strategies as you're doing the dishes, then the low back doesn't get so, so sore or the hamstrings tight. Okay, and then come back to sitting. And we've got one, one more dish experiment to do, which is you've got a plate in your hand, but you wanna wash the bottom of it. So you could put both hands on the plate like a sandwich and turn the plate over. And go back and forth a few times. Does your weight shift? And if your weight shifts, how do you counterbalance that weight? So if when the plate's on the left, is your weight on your right sit bone? Or is it on your left sit bone? You could do it either way. You could plate on your left sit on your left sit bone, plate on the right, right sit bone. And plates are light, so you could probably get away with that. But if that plate was suddenly heavy, you're washing that, that turkey platter. Um, try taking your weight left while the plate is right and go opposite each other. Yeah. And then try doing it without shifting weight so it's all in your arms and shoulders. And see if you feel a little tension building in your wrist so don't let your weight shift. Try not to get your shoulders involved too much. Try and just do it with the wrists and see if something in here gets a little cranky. And then let it be the bigger motion. Because this way, if you drop a dish, it makes a really satisfying splat on the floor. <laughs> my, my, my oldest child, my, my son Daniel, when we take him grocery shopping, we had, um, well, there were two things he liked. You know those baby food jars? They make an incredibly satisfying splat when you take them and you slam them down onto the floor. And so we, he would be sitting in the front and he would reach back and then wham and aim at people's feet with the baby food jars. It was a great strategy to not be taken shopping. Um, <laughs> So we, we learned then you know, the baby food jars had to go in the very far back of the cart where he couldn't reach. And then he tried it with a cat food can, which was bigger, more dangerous, didn't make the same satisfying splat. And then it was like, all right, honey, we're going to do the grocery shopping after work, and only one of us is going to go without the kids. <laughs> but it's a very satisfying motion to take a dish and slam it down. Uh -huh. Kind of fun to, to play with but you really feel how your whole body can be involved in that motion. Uh -huh. And then take it back to smaller and you'll find that turning over the dish can still have some of that satisfying fun of smashing the baby food jar or the dish. Uh -huh. All right, put your dish down. Come up to the front of your chair if you're not there already. Close your eyes, sense your feet. Exhale, wait till you have to inhale and feel how the breath goes into your body.
look for any differences in how you feel, how your mood is, your sense of uh, looking forward to the day or dreading the day or you know, how you feel about the day that's coming up. And then let's open for some discussion. I'm curious to hear how you liked this more tangible lesson compared to some of the ones that we do. Um, and if, if you like it, what other activities would be fun to explore with this way? Joan. I, I liked it, just your voice, but also I liked it back and feet. And, and I learned something a while ago, like if you're standing for a long time and you just move your feet around in a circle type thing, I could stand longer than I ever thought I could. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, the, that's what I'm hoping, that you take those little pieces out and, and play with. And it's like, wow, yeah, this is it's not so bad to stand. Variation. The human body loves and thrives on variation, even though we're really good at habits of doing it the same way every time. <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth. Oh, you're muted still, Elizabeth. I heard you say that uh, while you're skating, you put your sit bones back and also that at the sink, holding your belly in. Holding my belly in when I walk isn't the way to go faster and better, is it? No. No. Well, no. It, it, holding the belly in, when, if, if everybody try this, hold your belly in and feel how the middle of your back goes backward. Mm-hmm. So that is one thing you can take backward to counterbalance reaching forward. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, it puts a fair amount of strain up here holding because it, it kind of increases the weight there. But if you go the other way and you take the bottom of your pelvis back, it's usually a, um, a, a more... And even that in walking, there's a part of walking that we pull our belly in as we're lifting the leg forward. And there's a part of walking where we tip our pelvis the other way as the leg is behind us. So when, when the pelvis, uh, there's the socket where your leg goes in. And if that socket is tilted forward, it's easier to bring your leg forward. And when the socket tilts backward, it's easier to go backward. Okay. There's pretty much no motion of just hold this muscle tight and life is gonna work better because half of everything has either tightening one muscle on the joint or the other muscle on the joint. And it's, it's the knowing when to do each one and the relationship between that makes life easier. Okay. How about bicycling? And bicycling, uh, like on a road bike, uh -huh. um, put my chest forward to get my six bones to go back in the saddle. Uh -huh. And that will make it much more effortless to reach down for the handles. Because if, if you curl your body this way, and then you try to look up, half of your back is rounded and, and your neck is here, and you're just gonna be achy, achy back there. But if you tilt your pelvis so your sit bones go backward, that allows your torso to be more in extension and allows you to lift your head from deeper in your body to see. So you're not just doing it in your cervical spine and it becomes more comfortable. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. How about the little exercise on loading the dishwasher? That, that bending over is, is real hard for Rich. Ah, um, motion, you know, from the sink to the dishwasher, so. From the sink to the dishwasher, let's everybody stand up for a moment. Let's just play with that motion a little bit. So my, my guess is the hard part is the bending over to reach from those modern dishwashers that open right next to the floor. Um, yeah. So to bend over to pick that up, the more you stick your bottom backwards, try like aiming your sit bones at the, the back wall and see if that just naturally bends you over a little bit. The knee. Oh. Stick your butt out. Yeah. Hmm. 
because especially a man who is rich as size, but broad shoulders and a well-developed chest, there's a lot of weight up in the top half of you. And if you want that big weight to go forward and down, some other big weight's got to go backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay. the, the other piece that really helps with that is imagining that your feet stuck out for two feet behind you. So imagine you, instead of wearing shoes, you had a ski and it was like part of you. And when that foot sticks out behind you, there's just this tiniest motion backwards in your, it makes you glide in your ankle differently. So those would be the two things I would think about while doing dishes is, is butt back and big feet. Okay. So stay backward. Because other, let me, let me just talk about that one for one more sec. If, if you bend and you round to go down and then you try to twist, it's like the body wants to try to do the twist in the lumbar spine, which just does not like to twist and it gets really cranky. Um, but if you bend by taking your bottom back and leaving your back flatter, you can then kind of pivot on your feet and turn your pelvis and then your body just turns. So if, if we stand up, we take the butt back a little, then you can swing your pelvis around. You might have to bring a foot forward as you do it. Does that give you some ideas, um, Rich and Noel, to play with? It does, it does. Great. He has left the room, but I will pass it on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sometimes we don't want to have skill at doing the dishes because then we're asked to do them more often. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Those, these, these new dishwashers are, it makes it that much farther away. You're right. Thanks. Thanks. I think that's, that's good. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions, or irritating parts of doing the dishes that we didn't talk about. All right, then a couple of announcements. Um, Cindy, would you like to talk about your women's group that is forming? I would. Um, um, tomorrow night, we're just trying something different and have a virtual, a virtual group of women get together between seven and eight Eastern Standard Time. And I was supposed to have a link available to send on the uh, chat. And I'll, I think I probably won't do that between now and the end of class, but I'll send it to Mira and afterwards. Um, okay. um, Mira, would you be able to, is Mira still on? I, I'll try I'll try to do it quickly if I can find okay. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I will, I will mute myself and then I'll, I'll be back. Okay. Cindy, Cindy has a, a group for women with Parkinson's. Um, and um, it's a it's a lovely conversation group um, with some some very humorous topics planned for the month of August. Fun things to to, to talk about. Um, I think that was the only announcement. 